Hi there. How's it going? Good. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm uh, gaming on a bit of a budget. Let's see. Uh, how much can I get for uh, that much? Follow me. Welcome to the gaming guillotine. Hi there. Welcome to the gaming guillotine, where I execute the poorly executed. My Halloween special is a new segment I'm doing called It Came From The Bargain Bin. Where I find a game that was found lost and desolate in some bargain bin somewhere. I paid for it with a paltry amount of cash and I review it and decide whether it is really a horrific monster or just misunderstood. We'll be starting off today with a game I've found several times in my local shop's bargain bins, the Glacier series. I was initially intrigued with the series because of the box art. You see, I have fond memories of Rush 2049 for the N64 combat racing, and this seemed like it would scratch that pulsating tumorous itch. And at the cost of $4.99 plus tax, I was willing to take a gamble. I mean, I bought things I thoroughly ended up hating for 12 times as much, and this was supposedly the third entry in the series, so it must have done something right. Right? 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 Okay, already I have regrets on this thing, and I've barely even started playing the thing. 1. Motion controls only, because everyone learned that mandatory motion controls can only improve an experience. Two, I know the Wii isn't a graphical powerhouse, but this is just depressing. These cars look like muddy papercraft to me. And only three cars to pick from starting off. Three, this music. Okay, I know it all looks bad, but this game could have solid play, right? Okay, well this is not by any stretch comfortable, at least it becomes functional with a little practice. But this is basically a game where precision controls aren't necessary. The tracks are fairly wide with mostly broad turns, and even though the car understeers like crazy on sharper turns, you can usually complete the races in a couple tries. I have to complain about the camera. The way it's angled against the car makes it very difficult to actually see the track. Especially going from even ground to uphill segments, or just uphill segments in general. I mean, just look at this. My input is just about as important for these things as the vicious hands of luck themselves. Jesus, take the weed Take it from my hands! Well, I was complaining about the angle making it hard to see, but it, at, now that I think about it, there really isn't much to see. At times, it's even hard to tell where the track ends and the scenery begins because the textures are just a depressing blend of grays and browns. And this isn't helped by the environments looking really similar. Some tracks just feel like shuffled copying and pasting. And in bits where I did start to leave the track and hit a wall, it was rather jarring. I mean that literally. 
When you hit a wall or obstacle, you basically pinball off of it. It's also visually jarring because when it happens, the screen flashes red like you were in a first-person shooter and you just took a mortal wound. Speaking of shooting, well, it's boring. The machine guns and missiles are functional, but mines are so small they might as well not even matter. Besides that, the tracks usually have mines littered around anyways. The last really wonky bit is the way your car behaves in mid-air. Your hubcaps must double as propellers or rudders because you can steer and change direction, and if you let go of the accelerator, you can actually turn tighter in mid-air, making zero contact with the ground. The tracks are really short, and you compete in about four races for each of the various racing cups, of which there are eight. Or really just four that you really run in the reverse shuffle. Each can be completed in about five minutes, not counting loading screens. All in all, Glacier 3 is just bland. There is no developer passion behind this thing, and it deserves to be put out of its misery. Well, with that one out of the way, what about Glacier 2, the one that came before? Well, first impressions aren't good. It maintains a cheap CGI look about it, but to my surprise it has something of a story mode. It alludes to a horrible tragedy in the first game of which I have no clue about, but that's what I get for playing the games in reverse order. Apparently a group of rich guys bought a mountain complete with towns and roads just to conduct a contest of combat racing. At least it's a premise for Cars with Guns. Honestly, do Cars with Guns really need a premise? They're Cars with Guns, you're gonna have fun if you've said it right anyways. But in all honesty, who cares about story and shovelware? Do, 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 do. How does it play? Well, I can't tell if I was starved for competency or just accustomed to the awfulness of Glacier 2 or other shovelware I was playing at the time, but it actually has some spirit to it. Mandatory motion controls are still an awful idea. The visuals, while nowhere near cutting edge even for the Wii, were crisp enough on the cars and the tracks at least have a differentiating look and feel to them. That's not to say this game doesn't have its own issues. It becomes glaring on level 4, a narrow track that runs along the side of a cliff-like glacier. The rubber banding is a thing to behold. Keeping up with the racers on this track isn't particularly hard, but God help you if you try and pass someone. They go from driving Miss Daisy to obliterating you off the roadway for having the gall to try and pass them. Also, I'd like to know what the heck is going on in someone's mind when you have the physics cause this kind of vehicular behavior. My chief complaint is that even on normal difficulty, the challenge curve is more resembling the reading of an EKG. Some levels are also pretty short, being beatable in less than one minute on some, and with 18 events, some of which are just repeat tracks that run backwards, it isn't exactly bursting with content. But for $5, I can at least say that I got some enjoyment out of it. It may be a good game for some younger or less experienced gamers, and at least isn't totally drab and boring like the drill to the temple that is Glacier 3. Nowhere near a great game, but I'd say passable. Glacier 2? Given your redeeming qualities, I hereby sentence you to being a drink coaster. As I sit here, I contemplate. On this All Hallows Eve, I did discover a monster and dealt with it accordingly. But now that I've reviewed Glaciers 3 and 2, where did they come from? I searched high and low, and never found Glacier 1. And that just leaves me to wonder. Where in the world did it come from? Hey guys, thanks again for watching this. I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, special thanks to Joe Gamer out of LaGrangeville, New York. They uh, actually helped me out with that intro. They let me do filming in the store, and they've got a lot of cool stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, as far as the video goes, I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you liked it, please like it and uh, subscribe for more, because I'm going to make more of these videos. And until the next execution, God bless all of you.